I step through the door to find a gallery full of illusion people. Despite size and box during my early visits, I always thought it was very spacious, but now when described like this, it looks positively cramped. I immediately noticed Sai standing in the middle of a lively discussion. You can tell where she is because she's the only one who has any, you know, actual uh, design because everyone else is just like silhouettes. Busily chatting with some old gentleman who is also a silhouette, probably. She's actually pretty tall and kind of cool looking, so she stands out in the crowd of silhouettes. There are a few dozen wine glasses laid on the tables along the brick I mean, back wall. Filled with burgundy liquids, a vast majority of the guests are sipping from their own glasses. The socially, uh, socially, uh, social teas or whatever and art. Oh, uh, this word, uh, so again, with words I don't tend to use, concerns or whatever. It's always like that. I'm mingling happily, exchanging mild opinions about Rin's art, which seems to be a secondary object of interest for most. I feel distance, excluded from the other people here. I can't claim even a uh, stretch to be a social uh, chameleon, so this situation is quite unnerving. And so I don't blend in the crowd at all, I just think that I do, trying to look as cool and smooth as I can. I wonder how Rin is handling all this. If it was me, I would be quite freaked out. Throwing the anxiety aside, I try to carefully navigate through the crowd, still in big sets of frame, and paintings now hanging on the walls. Rin's ignition takes about half of the gallery's wall space. Some paintings are less familiar than ours, but I recognize most of them. Well, that's an interesting one right there, isn't it? Is that a skull? Some are uh, created at the club meetings after all, or remember from the time when Rin was choosing a uh, portfolio. And these really are some pretty abstract looking paintings. I know that a couple of the unfinished paintings are framed and on the wall as well. Maybe that's what they call presented art. Even Rin's failures, if you can call them that, become exhibits of her skill. Quite paradoxical. She herself is nowhere to be seen, which is strange because even though it's crowded, the gallery is pretty small. It's fine, sort of. I don't know how to face her after yesterday. Maybe I shouldn't have even gone. But I promised various people, Rin included, that I would, so. Damn, it sounds like I do the things I do because some kind of instinctual upperness compels me to do Not because it would be sensible or not. I sneak close to the side to wait for our lull in the conversation so I can chat her up to even though her voice is almost completely buried under the general background noise, I hear bits and pieces of her talking about me. Yes, she is a high schooler at a local school. Even though she's graduating next year, I'm sure various art schools would be interested in I thought it'd be interesting to have an exhibition of someone who is still in early stages of development. It's so strange, it's like Rin is some kind of mini-celebrity, even though there this is nothing but a small exhibition opening at a small art gallery in the small festival. In fact, there's a friend of mine from... Uh... Who is... Who is talking? It's a sir! I use Rotten as interrupt by familiar voice and familiar smack to the back. I don't need to guess the book, but you might have to turn around. Yeah, I thought so. I remember Emmy being in this scene. So it's like, is Tyler gonna be uh, familiar or Emmy? And I couldn't make him to help. Hi, Emmy. Long time no see. Hi, you like a representative of the art club or something? I don't see anyone else from school here. Um, I don't know, really. I guess uh, I am. If that's the case, what about you? What about me? Uh, don't think I'm interested in art. Is that it, Hidro? No, that's not what I... Well, maybe a little, if you put it that way. I mean, even though you hang out with Rin, I've never heard you talk about art or so... Emily Hudson looks around her, looking discontented. It's true, I don't care at all, but she came to my track meet, so I thought it's only fair to return the favor. She leans close to trying to look on the head and all, but only managing to look conspiring. Do you get art? No, no, I don't. At all. My emphasizing head shake draws a giggle and a cheery head shake of her own out of Emily. Me, I, uh, me, Nyler. 
Hey, let's go talk to Rin. I bet you haven't yet, because I am Myler. Come on. Oh, she is there then. Before she has a chance to forcefully drag me to Rin, the Moya appears behind her with Rin in his toes. She's not dressed for the occasion, instead opting for the usual school uniform and unkempt hair. Maybe her natural look is what suits her the best. Hello, teacher. Hi, Rin. One please, Emmy greets the teacher cheerfully, causing him to turn around and look down confusedly. Who are you? I'm Emmy from school, class 3 4. Don't you remember? She looks positively shocked at the prospect that there could be a person who doesn't know her. Oh, sorry, you're in the same class as Suzuka, is it? It's right. Yeah. You'll have to pardon me, I have trouble remembering students who don't make art. Well, take art. Don't mind, don't mind. Hi, Irene. Hello. Congratulations for your super cool art thing, I'm sure you'll be a big hit. She throws her arms in the air for a monstrous emphasis, almost hitting me in the face. And look, Kasau came too! Rin doesn't look at me, nor does she greet me. Ah, congratulations, Rin. She keeps averting her gaze, pointedly looking at her sandals. Oblivious to the tension between us and ignorant of what happened yesterday, Emmy keeps on blabbering about this and that to her unresponsive way. Well, I guess she's used to not getting much out of her at times. Before long, the Maya and Sai turn to Rin and introduce her. Expect this, I catch a second of confusion when the guests see her arms. Sai is luckily on the ball and briefly explains about our scheme. Doubtful faces quickly change to curious. Would you mind telling us something about your art? My photo development is quite easily noticed by What do you yourself think of the differences between the older and more current works? And the birds flapping of its wings? It's quite rare for someone so young to dabble into abstraction. It would, uh, it would have been interesting to see how you work. Oh, definitely. I assume you use your feet. Must have been a great trouble to learn it. You should be proud. I, um... Will you be pursuing a career as an artist after school? She is bombarded with so many questions she can't even hope to answer all of them. Maybe that's for the best. Her intent to talk nonsense more than occasionally. So, where do you get your ideas? That's the fourth, I mean, fifth word. Rin keeps stumbling with her words, looking more and more vexed by the expected and inquiries. Huh. Everyone is waiting for her to say something, but she looks like a cat got her time. Each question piling up just adds to her distress. I fail to hear the question that is the proverbial one to many. It's like a motorcycle. Hello? Rin just frees for a long, long second until she falls on her knees. Hitting the floor ungracefully like a sack of potatoes. Are you alright? I don't know. Zuko, what's wrong, girl? I don't know what's wrong. A terrible silence falls upon the people gathering around me. Everyone is petrified, not knowing how to direct her a sudden seizure or something. She breathes with deep, trembling gasps as if she was running out of air, uh, staring ahead of herself with hollow eyes. Seeing that nobody does anything, I force myself to step. Uh, to step to Rin and lift her up from the floor, letting her lean against me to keep standing. Would you like some fresh air? Okay, let's go outside for a bit. I don't even wait for her to answer before grasping my shoulders and pulling her past the sun, looking to my sigh, Emmy, and guests. Excuse us. The cool evening breeze hits my face at the door. I let go of Rin and she leans against the stone wall, trying to catch her breath. Are you alright? I couldn't say anything. Rin is still not looking at me, so I look away too. Street lights and colored neon signs twist my vision into a blur of near blindness, forcing me to look back. At least she talks, even if she's not directing her words to me. What did you want to say? Maybe both of us can imagine that we are talking to an invisible friend. I don't know. Something that would have meant something. The silence lasts for a long time. I don't feel comfortable being alone with Rin. I'm not good at imagining things that don't exist do, or that things that exist don't. Wait, I'm not good at imagining things that don't exist do, or that things that exist... That, that sentence sounds confusing. <laughs> so is he saying he has a hard time imagining things that don't exist? Lack of imagination, or... Well, it is kind of hard, like, try to picture, like, 
a creature in your mind that doesn't exist, but doesn't look anything like anything that exists either. Now that becomes difficult to actually do. Because like you could like think it's like like I got like I can see this tag of a belt and it has a kangaroo on it and just like think what if we took a kangaroo, right? Kangaroo, yes. Uh, the back of a kangaroo, combined with a, a turtle, a squid, and a platypus. That'd be a weird as balls kind of chimera kind of shit right there, but that's just combining like bits of creatures that you actually know exist. So it's kind of hard to actually think of something that looks nothing like anything you, you ever could possibly see in life. I don't know. My mind is pretty kind of weird. I think that's pretty obvious, really, considering, like, those of you who've actually watched my videos for quite a quite number of, like, months, at least years, will know that I'm pretty random. Very odd imagination. We should go back in. I guess I invited are in there. They probably want to meet you and talk to you. You know, ask you questions and stuff. Uh, that looks plain easy, but so hard for me. I don't want them to ask me questions like that. I can never say the right things. I can relate to that. It's like, if I, uh, if I were to picture myself in this scenario, it's like, again, with that, it's like, I can't picture myself as a written scenario, but I can picture myself as myself in the scenario, essentially. And I wouldn't fare well either. As I said many a times, got social anxiety. That kind of shit would, like... I'd probably get shut down, just like, nope, 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 can't say a word. I'd just be silent the whole time, and in my mind it's like, I just wanna kill her, I don't like it here. Well, uh, what do you want then? That someone would have, uh, 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 that someone wouldn't have to ask questions from me. Okay, so this is the final choice in the game. One of them leads to the good ending, the other leads to the neutral ending. And of course, that means making another save point and going with the neutral ending first. Well, aren't you happy people are interested in your paintings? I mean, isn't that why you went ahead with having the expedition at all? Of course, they would ask you questions if, you, if they think it's interesting. It's like having sunrise twice in a row when you want to bathe naked in moonlight. Nice, but it's not good enough if I complete the sentence for it, even though I don't understand her inappropriate metaphor. I don't get it. You should try to be happier. It's your big night. All these people are here to see your paintings. I think it's awesome. I'll wait for her to say something I were for or against, but Rin keeps moving. She doesn't want to answer questions or explain to me what's wrong. If she had something to say, the words are left unspoken. The words that you cannot say. I shudder against the chill wind that blows in the streets, and its howling fills the silence. We should go back in. You got everyone worries. Ah, there you are, feeling better. It could, uh, it's pretty hot in here. A dizzy smell can catch you off guard. He laughs rashly, almost obnoxiously. You should drink something if you're feeling weak, Tezuka. Rin nods weakly, but it seems to be enough to convince Nomaya that she's fine. He pushes Rin a bit forward to introduce her to the person he was conversing with. So, about what we were talking about before. Ah, yes, I'm very excited to meet you. I mean, I'm very excited to meet you. Sorry, they have the same font color and all. I'm shut out of the conversation, the background noise of dozens of hollow discussions fill my ears with indistinct buzz. Even the Emmy has disappeared somewhere. Standing in the middle of the crowd is a surprisingly lonely feeling. Not only Rin, but everyone else here seems to be a part of something. Not a part of it. I'm happy for her, I really am. It makes me feel that I haven't accomplished anything yet. Rin is a living proof of the potential of a human being. She overcame her disability, even made it a strength. She should be happy. What is my potential? Rin made it this far, how, but how far can I go? How long does the route go on for? The last day before summer vacations is waiting slowly. Science is the final exam of the Trimester, and then we are free. 
The collective yearning for liberty is almost palpable in the classroom, even though the weather seems a tad cloudy. It might rain today, who knows? What I'm envisioning is that... What? 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 I suppose this must be one of the neutral ending CGs, because Walkthrough mentioned that uh, it would like fill up missing CGs that you wouldn't get if you just went for the good ending. So this must be one of them. I forgot what I was even going to say before that. <laughs> I've already finished the test because... It... Oh yeah, I remember now. Editing seems like it's going to be a pain in the ass for this recording. I've already finished the test because it was pretty easy, so I'm doodling lazily on the flip side of the paper, waiting for me to the call. Hold on. Let's have a look-see here. So, Rin. Uh... Is that Emmy? That's Rin. Uh... Oh wait, I think I know, recognize now. The face, yes, and that, yes, that's Yuko, probably. Is that Kenji? Must be, because you got like two girls here, he's like, ah, no, conspiracy! And, um, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, for some reason, I think of Muto looking at it, so maybe it's just uh, bits of facial hair. Look at that, it's just like, shit, I dropped it! Boom! Very well, he's been hanging out with Rin for so long, he's obviously got gotten into the abstract bit going on here. It also prevents Misha from trying to uh, convert, uh, covertly look at my answers over my shoulder. She might fool the attentive teacher, but I can tell that she's right to look. I guess it's her best bet at passing the test. Doesn't make me feel any mercy though, so I just ignore her and look around. It's quiet. The only sounds in the classroom, besides the soundtrack, are the quiet shuffling of papers and Muto's constant coughing. It makes me awareness. It makes my awareness of the surroundings slowly drift to the backstage of consciousness, giving room to all things. Vacation, huh? Some people will stay at school even over the holidays. Some will go back to their families. I probably should make the trip back home and report to my parents that I'm alive well. Not much to do at school anyway, I suppose. Next trimester will be stressful. Everyone will have to seriously start thinking about what to do after graduation. Including me. Hmm. Is that... is that possibly a Hanako? I'm only thinking this because part of her face is covered. Who would that be? Hmm. 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 Man, look how Rin looks in that one. At least I think that's supposed to be Rin. He's drawn Rin quite a few times, yeah. I look at my doodles. Uh, convinces me so, convinces me to stop trying to salvage them. It's a mess of lifeless lives. A waste of paper if it wasn't the flip side of my exam. Maybe it's because I didn't really set out to draw anything in particular. I just wanted to kill some time, so the drawing became exactly like I am. And Yuko became a plant, how about that? We've had a direction to go to. It'd be easier if I had some special talent like Rick. She has it easy. It makes me kind of jealous. You know what? I like how that one looks, though. It's like... It's like, has a meme kind of look to it. Where it's like, there'd have to be a caption on it. I know. And the lines there make it seem like... I know. But the lines there at the same time, it's just like... Well, I suppose it's fitting for Rin. You <laughs> can't really tell exactly what is going through her mind. It's like, ENLIGHTENMENT! Doubt, gloom, and just like poker face. I just picture it like something like Rin for president over it or something like that. It pisses me off that she herself can't seem to be happy with it. Ah, time! 
the calls for the end of the exam draws grown to this pleasure room half class. I don't blame them, the exam was kind of tricky. Willow expects a lot from our class, even though he's not strict at all. I guess he, like all of us, become scientists. It's like, everyone in this class must become scientists. That's the only thing I expect of you guys. Put down your pencils and turn, to your paper, turn in your papers, please. The biggest groan comes from the desk to my side. Misha's despair is understandable. The dark aura of lost hope emanating from her seat makes me see the things leave. Lightened and of and sympathetic to her. Now then, there should be homeroom before you are free. I only have a few announcements to make, so this should be over quickly. His announcements are never important, so I listen to him only with one ear. Misha seems to be too down in the dumps to even pretend attentiveness. She slumps her head against the desktop, looking stricken. Any time I see Misha, it's like her face has like this kind of look to it where you just want to pinch her cheeks. Cheer up, Misha. It's vacation. Don't worry about the test. Thanks, he chan Her frown comes a small smile and a spark of excitement lights in her eyes. What are you going to do over your summer vacation, Hee-chan? I'm going to Chi-chan's place. They have this awesome and super cool mansion. I'm so excited. Well, it's the first time I've heard of such a thing. As I said, early on in his LP, Shizuna is around his window rafts I haven't been through. I mean, I did try at one point, and it got up to a certain point. I don't think he even got into Act 2, or maybe it was just after Act 2, and I just kind of, like, didn't actually finish, go through the rest of the route, essentially. So, I still have no idea about that route. But we'll get to it eventually. Heck, maybe even after this route, it depends on what one it lands on. I'm sure it'll be the best of summer vacation ever. She seems to have forgotten all about her misery in a few seconds and bounces up and down on her seat as if to pump up her excitement. I don't have any real plans, I guess. Is that so? Maybe you should. A finger tap on her shoulder steals Misha's attention away from me. Shizune points to Miller, who is expectantly looking back at the two of them. Oh, sorry, Chen. Yeah, see, Chen, I didn't notice teacher finished already. <laughs> she clears her throat and takes a deep breath. Stand! I stand up with everyone. Since I came here, I've always wondered about something. What do the wheelchair bound students think about this daily tradition of being unable to do it properly? Is it a fox pass to keep to this tradition in a place that bypasses many others for convenience? Even though I never asked anyone, during these short weeks here I've come to the conclusion that they definitely are not insulted. They understand. That's what I like about the school. Nobody is too uptight about anything. Everyone is so considerate and understanding of each other. I wish the whole world could be like this. Well! I turn the page slowly, listening to the rustling sound the paper makes when my fingers are restless. I am restless. It's a summer vacation. No class, no homework, no art club meetings, just free time to spend high problems. It doesn't feel like anything. I try to cheer up Misha, but I'm not feeling too cheery myself. To be honest, the free time is intimidating. It reminds me of the hospital and the long, meaningless days that had to be filled somehow. The only difference is that there I was bound for the ward, guarded by the clearest like nurses. Reading was a good solution back then, but the thought of spending my summer vacation reading books feels nerdy. But that has nothing to do with the fact that I'm reading it now. I'm just going time and trying to fight my anxiety. Besides, my mind is on our matters, stretching in too many directions to make sense of anything. Lost a book I've been on since Tuesday is progressively progressing slowly. Feels like this book is taking me forever to read than it took the author to write. I try to put it down for a while, then read some again. Start all over from the beginning, read each page page twice. Nothing works, so I have zero concentration. Take me with me just in case, I head out to get some fresh air and inspiration as to what to do. I make my way to the quad, passing by students heading for the gates. The hastiest ones are leaving for their homes already, judging from their luggage, some are dragging them with them. I guess that no matter how hot it will Yamaku is, home is still home. Still, I heard some people will be staying here on the vacation. The quad is big enough for its center to be a shadow us, no matter how high or low the sun is. Ah. Uh, what, what button did I press? No, it wasn't that. No. 
I do. Wherever that is. There we go. I don't know. He must have hit there. Hello, uh, the sun is. I stop in the middle and bask in the wall. The brightness makes me squint my eyes when I look towards the main building. It looks all but abandoned already. Yuka was not work today, so the next time I can get books from the school library is after vacation. There's a public library somewhere, I'm sure, but I'm feeling too lethargic to find out where it is. The hole is equally dead, so I have to content myself with returning to the dorms, ending my leisurely walk sooner than I expected. Then again, I wasn't quite sure what I was expecting in the first place. On a moment's impulse, I enter the girls' dorm and see if Rin or Emmy are there. Well, there is, so I go back to my own room to dwell on my lethargy. I should talk things through with Rin. She really bothers me. Defying the conceptual equivalent of gravity, she balances on thin lines zigzagging between sanity, incomprehensibility, and instability. Rin affects me too, but she challenges me in ways that I didn't know, or more accurately, didn't hope existed. I've started to wonder whether these feelings are really love, or I was just fooling myself. Surely it would be insanity to consider that. For the rest of the day, Rin, the hospital, Yamaku, and vacation swell from my head. I can't concentrate, even on concentrating. Words seem to come and go haphazardly, fragmented into two small pieces of cognition. I pick up the book and manage to read a hundred pages, for I'm sure by tomorrow I'll have no recollection of what happened in the story. That's pretty much me whenever I do my recordings half the time. It's like I'll leave it for a week or a month even with some of them, and then you get back to it, it's like I have no idea where I left off. And that's relatable for pretty much anyone really. It's like whether it's a story or a game, you leave it for a long time, you come back to it, it's like where the hell did I leave off? <laughs> I try to clean up my room, but even that proves to be too bothersome. Too time consuming and requiring too much attention to detail. I know that feeling. My room is relatively clean nowadays, but it was a mess for quite a long time, and that was part of the reason I just was like, too much effort. You just take a look at it, it's like, where do you even begin? It's usually like this, when you have nothing to do, you do nothing even if you could. As expected, Mum calls me and I end up promising to see if I can get a train ticket for tomorrow. Failing that, the day after. Maybe I'll go downtown tomorrow anyway. I could do some shopping or something. It's not that I need anything, but maybe there are summer sales and I could pick up something. Why am I trying to force myself? Before I was content with having nothing to do, save for kicking the ball every now and then at the field. Now it seems I can't settle down at all. Is it because I've changed or because my world has changed? By eleven, the darkness bids me to sleep. Medication bottles are mm, recently or whatever arranged on my night table. Not at all beckoning, rather pointedly reminding me of the reality instead. It's evening, so I have to open three bottles, attract one large oval shaped one, two small round ones, and one large flat that has to be cut into half. Close bottles and chug down medications with a chase for a fresh tap water. The water tastes metallic on my tongue. I swallow it along with the pillows anyway and head to the bathroom. The mindless job of brushing my teeth is fit for trying to sort my thoughts. One emerges from the mass, clearly rising above the others. I want to see Rin. I can't let my outburst of anger be the last thing between us before the vacation. I have to see her tomorrow. Sleep overcomes my confused mind with more ease than it should. Long recall. Rain is falling on my summer vacation like an uncountable number of more bad women. Luckily, I'm not sure to finish it, but that will make me down cast too. It's been like this since morning, and there is no end in sight. An impenetrable grey mass of clouds shadows the sky as much as it shadows my mood. In a bout of defiance, I finished cleaning up this morning, but after that was done, I ended up staring out of the window in hope of the weather clearing. The in 
Yeah, the incessant drumming of rainfall against the roof and the pavement is mesmerizing. A droning background noise to lose your mind to. This won't do, I have to get a move on. Should I back now or later? I decide on a ladder and make my way outside, pausing briefly at Kenji's door to listen to the odd clunking sounds from the other side. I don't dare to knock out of the fear of finding out what he is doing. Raising the rain from under my trusty umbrella across the space to the guild door. Knocking on Rin's door yields no answer, but the door behind me opens instead. Sal, hi! Terrible weather, I even missed my morning jog. She frowns, but I would be glad if I was her. Emmy's morning jogs were anything but late, at least. Oh, hi, I was. You're looking for Rena, I don't think she's there. Have you seen her recently? Yeah, just this morning when I woke her up. The mention of waking up makes Emmy yawn like a cat and makes me feel silly. Of course, she has seen Rin. Emmy wakes her up and helps her get dressed on most mornings. You mix her lunchboxes every now and then. They're like sisters, even though they seem to have nothing in common. I wonder which one is the elder sister. Probably Emmy, I guess, for odds. She's really diligent, even though she gives the feeling of someone who would be a total ahead. Why does it feel odd that she is so dutiful under that cheery grin of hers? She left for the gallery a few hours ago. Hey, you listening? Maybe I'm making a funny face or something, since Emmy tilts her face quizzically, looking at me with her eyes round and inquisitive. Hmm? Her innocent face seems to request my attention. Yeah, I'm listening. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course. She throws her brow, licking her lips as if to prepare for something. Why do you care so much about Rin? I mean, you probably hang around her more than I do, and we even slept in the same bed sometimes until her lately. After she banned you because you ravaged her hair? A shock of horror widens Emmy's eyes, at least twofold, making them seem even more saucy like than usual, while a healthy blush rises on her cheeks and ears. She told- Oh, I'm so gonna strangle that Rin or something all horrible. I hold back my laughter, at least she directs her disdain at me. Emmy recuperates quickly from the embarrassment and seems to forgive Rin in the same instant, getting her focus back on me. Anyway, you in love with her or something? Uh-oh, this really feels like an elder sister question in a suitor. Emmy is kinda nosy, and not in a good happy way, if there even is one to begin with. She'd make a good partner for me, sure, to be honest. The horror! The horror! That's already your second question, so I don't think I have to answer. I try to conjure up a front made of pure crystallized cool and uninvolvement. I wonder whether I managed to fool even myself. Oh, she only makes that face. Well, this is... Well, actually... Has she made that face at any other point than during those scenes of hers? Because that's like her mega mischievous face, that is. At least Emmy is waggling her, her eyebrows dangerously with a nasty smirk on her lips. Is that a yes? No, it's not a yes. Obviously unsatisfied at my refusal to answer her way too into its question, she has enough sense to back off. Doesn't stop her from sticking out her tongue at me like a kid and giggling again. That's your answer, I don't think I have to talk to you anymore. Seems to see that she's not really angry. Besides, I have to go back now, Mum will be worried if I miss my bus. See ya! Yeah, bye. She retreats back into her room, leaving me alone in the hallway. What's between me and Rin is not our business, right? That's why I end up not saying anything about our fight to Emmy. Rin must have not said anything either. Maybe that's the difference. Is that maybe it actually opens up to... That isn't that... Yeah, it's the same for Emmy's route, isn't it? Like, an alternative way of getting on to her, her actual normal good ending. Is to open up to Misha about it, and then Misha will give him some advice, and then he'll be like, Damn it, how could I be so blind? Only this time, it's actually Emmy that I go to for advice, sort of. I guess, even though they are friends, there are things they don't talk about. So if Rin is at the gallery, I'd have to go all the way there. Now that I managed to get out of my room, I suppose it's not that much of a ball to go, down, to go downtown. I could go get a ticket to put the train back home, we'll have to wait. At least until tomorrow. 
Oh, we are going to carry a bag to the train station in this rain, even if there's not that much of it. Not that much of it. Well, I think he was more thinking, even if it wasn't raining much, still now. But it's raining a lot. Rain makes all that time seem very unstable as if they were fading away. The townscape turns into a shapeless collection of various fuzzy tones and grey, instead of distinct forms of buildings and cars. Those poor souls who are forced into the damn board try to make as much haste as they possibly can, waiting each other for their shed injuries. I turn the final corner, the 22nd corner, so to say, and immediately feel stupid for being amused by my own body. The door beckons me with promises of hope. 